What's going on everybody, Dylan K. Johnson here, and today I'm gonna walk you through five tips to help improve your wedding photography. Let's go. Tip number one is going to be have a backup camera. Now this doesn't mean it has to be something super fancy. You could have a 5D4, an EOS R, an A7 III as your main camera, and then something as simple as an A6400 or a GH5, anything, a Canon 62, 60, 5D3, 5D2, whatever it may be. It just needs to be a second camera. In case of an emergency, if your main camera dies for whatever reason, you have that backup so that you can continue shooting without missing out on those moments. Now another advantage to having multiple cameras is the ability to have multiple focal lengths at the ready, meaning you could have on one camera, say a 7200, you can use that, get in really nice and tight right up on the bride and groom, maybe get in on some family members sitting in the crowd, anything like that. And then on your other camera, say you've got a 1635 or a 24 to 70, then you can get those nice wider, more establishing shots. So it's just a great way to be able to keep pace with everything that happens during weddings. They tend to happen very quick and things tend to be missed if you're not ready. So being able to utilize multiple focal lengths and cover a wide focal range with two cameras and two lenses allows you to capture just that much more and therefore step up your wedding photography game. Now on to tip number two and for this we're going to be breaking off of tip number one and it's going to be sync your camera settings. Meaning if you have multiple cameras you're going to want to go through and sync all of the settings that you're using across each of those cameras. So your white balance if you shoot a different white balance on each camera when you go to edit them in post it may Images from one camera are going to look one way and images from another camera are going to look another way. Now you should be shooting in RAW so you can easily correct this white balance issue, but having everything synced in camera allows you to speed up your workflow and ensure that everything just moves that much smoother. Another thing to be sure you sync are your camera's timestamps. Now this one is crucial and this is actually a mistake that I made recently when I shot a wedding is my main camera was set to one time zone and my other camera was set to another time zone. Meaning when I imported the images into Lightroom to start editing, the images that I took on both cameras were about an hour apart. So when I started to sort through them, I would have images that were supposed to be taken at the same time completely out of place as you can see here. So that's one crucial step to remember is to sync your camera's timestamps so you don't have this issue. Again, it just helps speed up your workflow so that you're editing similar shots and you move fluidly from say the makeup into detail shots, into the ceremony, into family shots, all of that stuff. You just wanna make sure that everything is as organized and easy to handle as possible. Now on to tip number three, it's going to be get yourself a macro lens. Now the reason for this is with weddings, you're gonna be doing a lot of detail shots. Detail shots of the rings, the bride's dress, shoes, makeup, hair, um, the details of the venue, all kinds of different things. And with these shots, you wanna be able to capture the details as best as possible and that's where a macro lens is gonna come into play. Personally, I use the Canon 100mm L-Series image stabilized macro lens. This one is an amazing lens. It's one of the sharpest lenses that I've ever used. If you guys wanna learn more information about it and see my full review of it, you can click on the card somewhere up here, I think. Right over here? Yeah, that's it. But yeah, a macro lens is crucial to wedding photography, and I think it's something that every wedding photographer should have in their kit, be it a 100 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, doesn't matter. Something that's going to allow you to cap those intimate details. And moving on to tip number four, that's going to be create a shot list. Now with this, there's thousands and thousands of lists online. You can go and search wedding shot lists and they'll come up with hundreds and thousands of results. And you can just open up any of those guys, take one of those, maybe screenshot it, copy them down, write them down, whatever. But then you wanna go and meet and sit down, maybe have a cup of coffee with the couple and go over these shot lists. Go over which images that they really want, maybe go over specifically what family members they'd like to get pictures with. With weddings, family members are generally flying in or driving in from all over the country, maybe even all over the world. They're spending a lot of money to come to this wedding, which means that you wanna be able to sit down with the couple and say, okay, is there any family members that you really want me to take a picture of? 
One of the biggest things that a shot list will do is it will help give you insurance. Now, I don't mean this in a bad way, but what can happen is if you don't sit down with the couple and say, okay, this family member is gonna be here. We wanna make sure we get a shot with her. We wanna make sure we get a shot with him and him and her and this family member. And then you get all of that laid out so that when it comes time to take the pictures, you know exactly who the bride and groom want pictures with. Sometimes, not very often, but sometimes what'll happen is a bride and groom may come back and say, Grandma Vicky was here and we didn't get a shot with her. She's never gonna be back again. What are we gonna do? And you can come back to that shot list and say, look, Grandma Vicky wasn't on the shot list. We sat down, we went through everybody that you wanted to make sure that you got a picture with or of, and Grandma Vicky was nowhere on that list. So I'm sorry, but there's nothing we can do. So as bad as that may sound, it helps you as being a bit of insurance, again, so that they can't really come back and complain too much because you went through this entire list in detail and they didn't include it on there. So that's tip number four. Tip number five is going to be schedule time time for pictures. Now, this is one thing where a lot of brides and grooms tend to go through and they just kind of do, they just want to plan the whole day kind of as it goes. They might have a rough idea. Okay, we've got the ceremony at one, should be over 1.30, 2 o'clock-ish. Then we've got the reception starting sometime around 2.30, 3 o'clock. But the best thing you can do is sit down with the bride and groom, again, while you're doing the shot list, maybe after you finish that, and start scheduling time for pictures. Pictures. This is crucial because most times what will happen is as soon as the ceremony's finished, everybody's going to want to run off to the reception and start eating, drinking, hanging out, congratulating the bride and groom, and so on, and then you're not going to have any time to do any actual pictures. So generally what I like to do is immediately after the ceremony, I'll pull the bride and groom aside and I'll get some really nice shots with them, maybe go around the venue a little bit, spend about 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour, and just get some really detailed detailed, intimate shots of them, and these are generally gonna be their favorite shots for the entire shoot. So this is what you have to show them and explain to them, is that we need to set this time aside so that we can capture those memories. And then from there, what I like to do is I like to bring in the families. Usually what I try to do, and this is what I've seen work best, is after the ceremony, try to schedule in about an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending on the size of the family and the size of the wedding, for those intimate pictures and then those group shots. And these are the crucial ones where generally you're gonna be having to wrangle whole groups of people, families, everything like that. So, and a kind of a bonus tip with this is whenever you're shooting multiple people, remember to keep your f-stop around four to 5.6. That will help keep everything tack sharp and in focus. Don't shoot groups with an f-stop of 1.4. Been there, done that. You don't wanna make that mistake, trust me. This is one of the biggest things is make sure you schedule out time to capture the images that you want because without it, things will get missed, memories will get missed, and what's half an hour, even an hour to be able to capture those memories that you'll be able to share and cherish with your kids, your family members, and everybody for generations to come. So that's been five tips plus a few bonus tips thrown in here and there to help you improve your wedding photography. If you guys have learned something, if you guys have taken something away, hit that like button. Definitely helps out, helps support the channel. Also, hit that subscribe button for more great videos like this coming at you every week. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, I think I missed. <laughs> Let's grab another one. There's keys in that hat. How about this one? Bloop. You can still see me. That's the problem with the mesh hat. Look that, we just. Uh...